Hey, how's it going? Reagan Ram here with OrpheusAudioAcademy.com, helping you make better music and grow your fan base online. And today I'm going to be talking all about effects, insert effects, sends, returns, buses, aux tracks. What's the difference between all these and how, when, and why do you use them? Today we're talking all about the confusing topic of buses and sends. Real quick, I'm going to kind of just explain what these are and then actually show you in logic um, how the, these all work together. So first off, what are insert effects? You probably know what these are. Um, these are called inserts because um, in the olden days when you didn't have computers, this would be an actual place on the channel strip where you would directly plug in a piece of gear like a compressor into the channel strip on the mix console. And so these can only affect then just that channel and they would also work and work in your DAW in sequential or serial order, meaning whatever is the first in the order of your inserts, that's going to affect the sound first, followed by the next one will then be affecting the sound that has already been affected by that first um, insert. So for example, if you put a compressor first and then an EQ, then what you're EQing is the sound after it's been compressed. Or for example, if you put reverb first and then put a compressor, you're going to be compressing the reverberated sound now instead of just the dry sound. So that's why the order really matters and you want to put signal controllers on first, so EQ, compressors, those kinds of things, before you put on signal effects like delay, reverb, and other time-based effects like pitch. Uh, things as well. That's why uh, on insert um, effects in the studio though, typically you would just put a level based processor, so like an EQ, compressor, or limiter, and then you would save all the effects for a send. So here we are in Logic, and this is what the insert effects would look like. So you got here it says audio effects, and this is where you can insert a plugin uh, right onto the track. And so in this case, I have like a compressor right here on the kick. And so this is only impacting the kick track, only this track and nothing else. So the downside with insert effects is they can take up a lot of CPU. So for example, if I wanted to compress every single track, I would have to insert a separate version of this plugin, say if I wanted to use the same compressor on all these tracks. So now it's all these plugins are now running and taking up CPU power. And that's fine for like signal controllers like EQ, EQ and compression. You typically want those on just about every track. But then your effects like reverb and delay your, and any other effects like that, you're going to want those on a send. You're going to have those on a separate aux track so that you can just have, say, one or two instances of reverb or delay that are affecting all of your tracks. So instead of having um, potentially dozens of instances of that same reverb, loaded as insert effects and in all these different tracks, you only have one or two reverbs so that really cuts down on um, how much your CPU has to work. And so that's gonna save you um, time because you're not gonna kind of be running into all those overload problems and it will enable you to actually get your tracks finished. And so now we're talking about sends and returns, which are basically the same thing. Um, it basically, they're basically the same thing. Um, they just have different names based on the signal flow of how the signal is flowing. The mixing desk, if you're using if you're using an analog mixing desk, or in this case through your digital DAW, your digital mixing desk. So a send is an output on an audio device used for routing a signal to an external device, such as a reverb delay or other processor. So um, in other words, and sends are typically paired with returns, which accept a signal coming back from the output of the processor. Processor. Sends are also often used to augment a signal, so like a reverb delay. So with sends, you are sending a portion of the signal to a device or an aux track in, the, in our case, typically if you're working in the computer or in the box as it's also known. Um, so you're sending just a copy to be affected and then it is returning straight back to um, the original track it came from with the now processed copy and so you can use the little knob to control how much of the signal is being sent to be affected versus how much is dry and so then once that is affected the signal can then be mixed back into the main signal path so then we have the send effects here in logic so you can see here's an example right here so for this kick 
I don't have any sends on it. I'm not really sending it to any effects. Um, but for the snare here, I do have a couple of sends on it. So I am sending it to um, using bus, what's, what is here, bus 37. So you can see some of the terminology gets confusing because you're kind of using the same terms for different things. So for example, bus 37 is basically, you can also think of that as an aux track, right? So like buses and aux tracks are basically the same thing. There's different terms for the same thing. So I'm sending it to bus 37. Um, which is a reverb. So if I scroll over here, I have bus 37 right here. So we're sending right a copy of this. So if I turn this on, you can see we're sending a portion of it, a copy of it. Um, not all of it, right? That'd be like a hundred percent. I'm not sending all of it. I'm sending a portion of it to this reverb over here to be affected. And then it is returning back through here. So that's why I say sends and returns are kind of the same thing at least in Logic and a lot of DAWs, it's being sent and returning through this same little icon right here, the same what's called a send here in Logic. So it's returning right here. So it's going over here to the reverb, it's getting affected, and it's coming back, and we're mixing and blending in a portion of the dry with the wet to create a, um, to add reverb to this snare um, track here. And so another reason why using FX sends is really great is because you can really control the effects now that you're using. For example, you can add, say, EQ to this reverb. So I'm sending um, reverb to the snare, but maybe I want it to be only reverb in the mids or something. So now we got a very controlled type of reverb on this snare, right? And we can also load up any number of plugins on this aux track or this bus or send track, whatever you want to call it. They're all kind of interchangeable names. So I could even put like distortion. So I got distortion, then reverb, then EQ, right? You can kind of stack it up and create really interesting effects. Another thing I like to do is add like a tremolo effect to a reverb, which kind of causes the reverb to, to shimmer a little bit on the left and right stereo channels. So there's a lot, a lot of creative things, like right? the kind of the sky is the limit when you're using sends for your effects versus you would have to try to load all of these up on just the insert effects. And that's again, taking up CPU power, especially if you're wanting to use that same interesting effect you created across several different tracks. So that's another reason why you wanna use effects um, or when you wanna use sends for your effects is not only is it cutting down CPU time, but you can have a lot more control over your effects and make them a lot more interesting and creative. It also makes um, automation very simple as well. So you can now um, use automation on this dial here so you can turn up or turn down how much of that interesting effect you created on a particular track over time. So then what are aux tracks and buses? You can think of aux tracks as the des destination of buses. So buses are what's used to transport the signal to another track. So uh, audio does not re get recorded at these aux tracks. Rather, it, it just passes through these tracks in order to be processed um, using plugins or hardware. So aux tracks are basically just think of those as like basically effects tracks or tracks that are gonna be used to um, affect the sounds that have already been recorded on other tracks. So you can think of aux tracks as basically the schools where the sound is going to be changed and then the buses are basically the school buses that transport the signal, the sound to those schools. And really aux tracks are kind of the same thing as a bus because they, they can also be just be called buses on their, on their own but it can be helpful, I find, to think of an aux track and a bus as kind of separate thing. So here's kind of a picture of what that would look like. So, so you have an instrument track and the output of that instrument is then going to be carried on say bus five to an aux track. And on that aux track, you might have delay, you might have reverb that is then affecting that signal. And then the output of the aux track can then feed the mix bus or the stereo out. So basically, a, a bus is where you are, you're completely sending all of the signal from one track to another track to be affected or controlled or what have you. And you can have multiple instruments, right? We can have a second instrument over here um, being moved 
um, via the same bus to be to the same aux track to be controlled. So this is what helps you save on CPU and also lets you affect multiple sounds together at the same time. So another way of thinking about this is a send is a copy of a signal that is sent to be affected and then is returned to its origin, whereas buses are when you are sending all of the audio to a completely separate track. So here is, is an example of what it looks like in Logic. So you have sends here on top. So you're te technically using buses are called buses in Logic. So you're sending a sound to a particular bus or an aux track where it's affected and then it comes right back to that same track. And then you use the little knob, the little wheel there to dial in how much of the original sound you want with how much of the affected sound. And then you have what are traditionally known as buses where you are sending the output of that track rather than that going straight to the mix bus or the stereo out, you are sending it to a separate all of the, all of that sound to a separate track to be affected. And now we have buses or aux tracks where you are basically, what we're, what we're really doing is just changing the output of a particular track. So for example, on my kick here, it is using bus five. So, right, I have my kick here. I can put whatever inserts I want. And let's say for some reason I want to put reverb on this kick, I can then load up a send and I can send it to where my reverbs are and then have that be affected. But then I can also change the actual output so I can bust this, right? So it's like sending the signal to a school, um, to sending the whole track after it's already been affected with its sends and its inserts. I can then send that entire signal to a separate track to be affected. And so in this case, I have it going to bus five, which in this case is my kick drum Bus. So I've kind of created a group for all my kicks in case I had multiple kicks in this track I just have one kick, but I, you see I can have kick one and kick two These are both routed to just the straight-up kick track here So then I can do group processing on all my kicks So if I had multiple kicks I can then compress those together or EQ the EQ those so then That creates a cohesive whole so my kicks are more glued together and that's on a micro scale. On a larger scale, I have a drum bus. So then this kick bus is then leaving on another bus. So so the kick, think of the kick as basically a kid that has to get on multiple school buses before he can get home, right? If the stereo bus or the stereo out is home, he has to get on bus five to go to one school. And then from there, he has to get on bus four to go to a completely different school or a different destination. But you have to go on bus four then to get to another destination. So in this case, right, my kicks are going into using bus five to get to this kick bus track. And then that is going to my overall drum bus, which is, which is on bus four. So my aux track, right, is using bus four. So that's the same across all my drums, right? All my drums, right, my, I have a snare bus here where my snares go into a snare and then that goes out to the drum bus. Same thing with toms and overheads and so on. So that way I have one drum bus for all my drums. And I just put that in a drum folder here, which is, this is nothing, it's just a folder. So I can quickly um, collapse all my drums if I wanna just close those, I don't wanna see those. But then open it up, I got my drum bus here so I can put all these different plugins I can use across all my drums and so this is going to save you time because you can control multiple sounds at once. So you might see if there's something you don't like in your mix, go to the drum bus first first, and see if you can fix, fix it there. But if something's still not quite right, say with your hi-hat or your snare, and you can't get it with a drum bus, then you can go and dive deep and actually edit those actual tracks. So this can save you time by using this bus system because you're able to kind of mix from a top-down perspective where you are hitting multiple tracks at once, but then you can still dive down and get detailed and at individual tracks if you need to. And so again, and also again, having these all go to one bus, this creates a more cohesive whole. So my drum kit sounds like one drum kit because I can have all these go to, I can again, send this entire bus. I can use a send to add a reverb to them. So they're all sound like they're in the same room. I can put compress compression on these, uh, right? I might use like some kind of a bus compressor, like this really great one by uh, IK Multimedia to 
glue everything together. And I can also use EQ and different saturation plugins, whatever I want to use to really glue together my drums and make them sound like a whole. And I do this in my, um, this is my mix template. Um, let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a tutorial on how to create a mix template in Logic. Um, I got the same thing for my bass and my synths, right? I've got different like synth groups that all feed a synth bus. Same thing for vocals and I kind of do that for everything. And then here I'm actually, I actually added my um, buses to my project so I can actually see them in here if I wanted to draw an automation, be really easy. So I've got all these here and I've also have the hidden function on so I can just hit the H key on my keyboard and then all my aux and bus tracks go away and I just see my actual instrument tracks. But then if I wanna see those real quick, I can pull them up. And all of these are actually feeding a mix bus, right? This is really important having a mix bus, which is separate. All my all my tracks are feeding to, right? All these tracks, they don't, they're not going straight to the stereo out, they're going to this mix bus. And so what that enables me to do is add in a folder here for reference tracks. So that way all the effects that I put on my mix bus are not also impacting my reference tracks. So I can quickly, you know, solo my mix bus um, to hear, you know, what, what I've done with my mix. And then I can quickly, you know, solo my references so I can compare my reference tracks versus my mix quickly and know if I'm on the right track. So that's another reason to use buses is it enables you to easily add references to your mix, to your project, without having those references then get affected by whatever tracks you put on your stereo out. In fact, I don't have any effects on my stereo out other than metering tools, right? So that in a nutshell is how you can understand how you use insert effects versus sends and buses and aux tracks. And it is confusing. It's um, especially since a lot of terms are kind of synonymous with each other and it's took me a long time to really figure this out. So hopefully I've explained it well in this video. Let me know if you have any questions below. And if anything's confusing, maybe I'll do a future video clarifying things. But hopefully this makes sense to you. And if so, feel free to drop a like and subscribe for more tutorials like this that I re-release. But of course, understanding buses and aux tracks and all that is just part of the process to finishing and releasing new tracks. So if you're wanting help and you want to release more radio quality songs faster, then be sure to grab my rapid mixing checklist in the description below. And this will walk you through a step-by-step -step proven process for taking a track from rough arrangement to finished mix and master so that you can release it and publish more music. Otherwise, let me know in the comments below what are some future tutorials you'd like me to do on this channel? All right, have a great day and I'll see you in a future video. Bye.